this reef is very, very special. Everything that's bad for a reef is going on in this bay. This bay has been overfished for over 100 years. There's big palm tree plantations that are spewing out fertilizer into the, into the bay. All the sewage water from Tela. So it's very interesting that we have a reef where supposedly there should be no reef at all. But not only do we have a reef, it's a reef that has more coral coverage than any other reef in the Mesoamerican area. So the reef system that we have in Tela Bay is called Banco Capiro and it is possibly the healthiest reef system in the Caribbean today. We're looking at three times the amount of coral. It was only discovered to scientists in about 2010-2011. And we think that one of the key reasons that the reefs in Tello are so healthy is because they have very, very high populations of the long spine sea urchin. Unfortunately, in the early 1980s, populations suffered from a cataclysmic decline. An unknown waterborne pathogen uh, spread through the Caribbean and reduced populations by about 95 to 99%, and populations haven't recovered since that point. We've lost about 60% of our reefs since the big die-off of the diadema. The worst enemy right now of the reef is global warming, obviously, but also uh, algae. So we're shifting from coral coverage to algae coverage. Diadema are very aggressive eating algae. My project involves trying to figure out why they're not recovering and then what it is that we can do in order to try to restore populations in the long term and hopefully bring back those grazing services, get more coral and then more biodiversity and help protect the reefs uh, for the future as well. Utila is kind of your typical Caribbean reef where it's quite degraded, there's a lot of algae, low reef complexity, whereas Tela has got a higher abundance of diadema. I'm not entirely sure yet why, but the project itself looks at a variety of factors that could be influencing their recovery. I've been looking at the predatory avoidance behaviour of sea urchins. The diadema species are a naturally cryptic species, so they do use the reef to hide in and as protection when they're not looking for food. Reef complexity is something that is of importance. If you look at some of the sites in Utila, they can't hide in a bunch of sand. In Tela, you do have such a high coral coverage, so you do have that opportunity of refuge. What Max has done in previous years is put down large blocks and that refuge is available for them. They then have the algae to graze on, which then hopefully will mean that more coral will be able to settle and you'll get that reef complexity back. We think that actually by providing artificial reefs, not only are we providing habitat that could stimulate that recovery, but it might also have a protective effect against future climatic changes as well. A reef in 20 years time is going to look very different to a reef today. And a reef that is predominantly grazed by urchins might ultimately look very different to a reef where the ecosystem is a bit more balanced. But I very firmly believe that we should be doing our best to ensure the survival of coral reefs in some way, shape or form, uh, and just try to do our best to, to help both of them really. Most of the things that we're doing are mitigating factors. Mitigating is kind of a bad word because it just means that we're prolonging something. It'll happen, but it'll happen later. And that's kind of a sad story to tell people. Um, when it comes to diadema, we can tell people a better story, a story that has a better ending. If we reintroduce diadema, there's a probability that we could actually recuperate our reefs. In the not so distant future, when water temperatures get too high, reefs like this could be the only reefs that survive. If the battle is going to be fought in these last reefs at the end, we better find out where they are so we can be prepared for when it happens.